and we're on. Okay, we have this form, and now we're going to put into use all the stuff that we've been learning. And if you don't have the little sticker for your graph yet, that's okay, because that's the very last part. So try to stay up with this. You're going to have one of these grids on the test on, on tomorrow. You'll have one of these. So we're going to do three of them. We're going to do two together, and then I want you to do the third one by yourself, and I'll walk around and make sure you're doing it correctly. By that time, you should kind of have it down, and you'll be able to do that for the test. This will count for a, a, a sizable number of points, because there's a lot of stuff that we're going to do here. All right, so we're going to start with x cubed minus 3x plus 3 as our function that we're going to do. All right, so there's a blank here for first derivative. So we want to take the first derivative of that. What's the first derivative of this thing? 3x squared. Okay, so we're going to write that there. Maybe I'll make that a little bigger for you guys to see. Let's see. Okay, all right. Now, to find the critical number. Well, while we're doing derivatives, let's go ahead and fill in the second derivative. What's the second derivative? Okay. All right. So that's the first thing you'll do. First derivative, second derivative. Critical numbers. How do we find the critical numbers? Set first derivative equal to zero. So we're going to come over here. You can do it wherever you want. But we're going to say 3x squared minus 3 equals zero. Okay. You could do it like this. So x squared is one. And what's x if x squared is one? Plus or minus one. When you take the square root of one, it's a plus or a minus. Okay? So we can go back over here and say x is negative 1, x is positive 1. Okay. And then we're going to take that second derivative and set it equal to 0 to get the points of inflection. And so our point of inflection is x equals 0. Okay. Does it look like we're going to run out of those? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're kind of, and they move. So if you put them in the wrong place, you can replace them. Okay. All right. So everybody good. On the first, the top part of the chart, take the first derivative, second derivative, find the critical numbers, find the points of inflection. Okay? All right. Then we're going to come back over here to our intervals and points. However many critical points, points of inflection you have, you need to put those in this box, and you need to skip lines. You're going to put them in order. How many do we have? We have three. And they go from negative one, and then zero, and then one. You want to go in order numerically, and you want to leave space on either side for an interval. So we're going to start here with x equals negative 1, and then x equals 0, and then x equals 1. So leave space at the top for an interval, on either side for an interval. Okay? So on this side, Negative infinity, x, negative 1. Does that make sense? x falls between negative infinity and negative 1. On the left of our critical point, that's the interval. What does it fall between here? Well, what's it between? Negative 1 and 0. So negative 1 less than x less than 0. So x falls between negative 1 and 0. 
what's the interval here? Between 0 and 1. So 0 is less than x and x is less than 1. And there'll be points available for all these different parts. So this is a sizable number of points for this test. Okay? And what about this interval here? Okay. All right. Okay? All right. For this first column, this is y values. And you're going to have a y value for everywhere that you have an x equals. How will you find the y value? Where am I going to plug that in? The original. Because it's y, not y prime, not y double prime. So take x equals negative 1, plug it into this original, and come up with a number to put right here. When somebody gets it, tell me what you get. Okay. So when you plug negative 1 into the original, you should get 5. When you plug in 0, that's easy because those two things go away. So what do you have left? 3. Three. And what about when x is 1? One? One. Positive 1, maybe? Yeah, positive 1. Okay. All right. So that's what you do in that column. If there's an x value, find the y value. Next column says first derivative. And all we're going to look at is the intervals. And we're going to test something here in the first derivative, plugging in and saying, is it going to be positive or negative? So what number could we pick here that would be the easiest? Something from negative infinity up to negative 1. Can't use 0. 0 is on the other side. So negative, you could do negative 2, negative 3, whatever. Take negative 2, plug it in here, and see if you get a positive or a negative value. If we take negative 2 squared, that's 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 3 is 9. Positive, right? So we're going to put a positive right there. Let me do those in red. Okay? Do the same thing with this interval, this interval, and this interval. Pick a number, test it in the first derivative, and decide whether you have negatives or positives. For negative 1 to 0, you're going to have to use like negative 1 half. What should you get? If you have negative 1 half squared, you're going to have like 1 fourth, 1 fourth of 3, and then take away 3. You end up with negative. So you're going to have negative here. What do we get for this interval? Anybody? And this one? Okay. If you didn't get that, that's what you should get. And that's just taking a number in that interval and plugging it in. And then you're going to do the same thing for y double prime, except where are we plugging it in? In the 6x. So that should be a little bit easier to plug in. So you're going to pick, say, negative 2. And if you plug in negative 2 to 6x, what do you get? Negative. If we put negative 1 half in there, what do we get? Negative. If we put a positive 1 half in there, we get positive. And if we put 2 in there, we get positive. OK. Everybody okay with that? So that's not anything new. We're just 
like pulling this all together in one nice little form. All right, conclusions, and these are pretty important. All right, this one, this column tells us increase, decrease. This column tells us concavity. And that's the stuff we're going to write in the conclusion. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Is it concave up or down? Okay? So what is this guy? What does the plus tell us? Increasing. So we're going to write increase. And is it concave up or down? Look here. It's negative. So it's concave down. Okay, so concave, I'm just going to do an arrow. Okay, so it's concave down. In this interval, what's it doing? Decreasing. Okay, decreasing and concave down. This one, third one's decreasing and concave up. And the fourth one, increasing and concave up. All right, there's one last set of information in the conclusions. You want to look on either side. You have a point here, and on either side of it. On the left of it, we're increasing. On the right of it, we're decreasing. So we're increasing, and then we decrease. What do we have? A max or a min? A max. max. So we have a max at negative 1, 5. Where did I get negative 1, 5? Here's my point. Negative 1 and y is 5. x equals 0, comma 3. We can't tell anything about this. It's not, it's not a max or a min, but it is concave up on one side and uh, down on one side, up on the other, so it's a point of inflection. So you would write point of inflection because that's all we can write there. And then at 1, 1, it's decreasing and then increasing. So what do I have? Decrease and then increase, I have a min. So I have a min at 1, 1. All right, so make sure you have all that information in the chart, and then we're going to move to your little graph sticker, and we're going to graph it. Okay, Did who, who didn't get them? Did you get them, Jeff? No. Okay. What is... Down to that. Oh, so we need some more. I'll have to go get some. Can I keep this card? Yeah, you can. Do you have graph paper? So you can maybe do that. I'll go get some more. Actually, Meg, can I send you? you oh, do you have that? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Good. Okay. So now we're going to sketch this using that information. Okay? So you've got yours, and I'm. Let's see if I can move this up a little bit. Uh, come on. I need you to move up. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is plot these points that we have. We have a max at negative 1, 5. So you want to plot that negative 1. You can either use, I think we can use the double, the bigger hash marks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's a point at negative 1, 5. We have a point at 0, 3. And we had one at 1, 1. 
Looks like a straight line, doesn't it? But it's not. Okay. All right, and then we want to just kind of look at the increase, decrease, concavity thing and what the intervals are. So up to negative 1, what's it doing? What's our graph doing? It's increasing and it's concave down. So increasing and it's going to turn there and be concave down. Would it necessarily be symmetrical? Symmetrical with? Like you've got a point at 0, 3. Would you also have a point at um, Over here somewhere? Negative, negative 2, 3 that it would pass through? Um, I don't think that's a given. I don't think that's a given. Um, let's look at this. Between negative 1 and 0, right here, what's it doing? It's decreasing and concave down. Okay. What is it doing between 0 and 1? It's still decreasing, but it turns concave up. And that's kind of hard to... But we know that it's doing that. And then the last one, it's increasing and concave up, so it's doing generally that. Does that make sense? Now, what I want you to do is take your calculator, and you can, you can do this on the test, but if you don't have all this stuff to back up what the sketch is that you draw, you won't get the credit. So you can, you can check it on your calculator. Put the very original x cubed minus 3x plus 3 in your calculator and see if you don't get a sketch that's similar to that one. Are you going to put it in your calculator? Um, you were zoning out on me. <laughs> I was put in the original in your calculator. That's what we're trying to do. Did everybody see it? Okay. And that's what we had to do back in the dark ages. So, But it's worthwhile. It's a worthwhile analytical task to do that. So um, that's what 13.4 is about. This is just a form that I created that kind of pulls it all together for you. Any questions? Okay. Let's. Oh, many, many. No, no. But you will have this chart as part of your test with a, a grid already on there run off, so you'll be used to doing it. Okay. Let's do another one. Everybody good with that one? Let's do x to the fifth minus 5x. Okay, let's do our derivatives first. What's the first derivative? And the second derivative? Okay. All right, so we get that. And then we're going to go over to the side and do the work to find the critical numbers. Yeah. How did I, I do that? How did I, I pick that for you? Am I going to end up with the same numbers? Oh. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> same critical numbers, same inflection point. I think we'll have some, a little bit different look. So we have 
x equals negative 1, x equals 1, and x equals 0 once again. But we will have different maxes and things. So let's put those in. How do we put them in? Don't start in the first line. Start here. And then you're going to fill in the intervals. Oh, that's a negative. Well, if I could write correctly, we'd be good. So you want to fill in your intervals to be like that. And then what do I do with the Y column? Anywhere that you have an X value, you want to plug in and get a Y value. What do we get when X is negative 1? Anybody? 4. When x is 0, we're going to get 0. And where x is 1, should get negative 4. And then you have to do that testing. So you're going to test the first derivative in for each interval. Okay, and you're going to get pluses and minuses. So when you take something here, if you take negative 2 and put it in here, you should get a positive. If you put negative 1 half, you're going to get negative because you're taking away 5 and you're taking a 16th of it. You're going to get negative. So you should get that and that. Okay. And you'll do the same thing with the second derivative. See what you get for those symbols. These are the numbers that I would say to test. Those are the numbers you're plugging in. What do we get for this column? What are the symbols? Jason, what would you get here? Negative, negative. So you should get that. Okay. <clears throat> All right, conclusions. What's this guy doing? Increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Okay, so increase and concave down. Decrease and concave down. Decrease and concave up. And increase and concave up. We're increasing and then decreasing. So what do we have here? Increase, decrease. We have a max. And a point of inflection. And then decrease, increase means we have a min at 1, negative 4. And then you're ready to graph. So plot those three points and see if you can get a sketch.
get something like that and you can check it. Do you want to try one more, or you think you got it? Think, you think you're good? <laughs> that's this side of the room that said, oh, I'm tired of that. Okay. If you, if you want to practice that other one, let me just, I mean, there's one on the screen. Um, I'll give you one to practice, and you can, you can do it on your own time. Okay, x to the fifth minus 5x fourth. It'll look a little bit different. So, okay, we're ready to go to the lab and work on homework and everything. It is 9.45. Uh, let's, let's say take an hour in the lab, get work on homework. If you haven't, you know, do everything in 13. Concentrate on that. If you get done with that and want to work on 12, great. We will meet back here at 1045, and that will give us time to review. Okay?